sick of trusting lame weather forecasts or dodgy online rain reports? I've got you covered. The rain gauge that's open source and easy to make by yourself. This bad boy will give you a precise rain measurements in your own yard, so you can ditch the other guy's sketchy data. Hi, how's it going? My name is Sebastian and today we're gonna make a sensor that not only detects when it's raining, but also tells us how heavy the rainfall is. And the best part of it? It'll do it way more precisely than any online service out there. This is invaluable information if you have a piece of land where you are growing anything that needs watering. For example, I've got a lawn and a few fruit bushes, so in order to keep them green in the summer, I have to water them on a daily basis. Last year, I even made a sprinkler controller so I can automate that process. It works really well with one small caveat. The sprinklers will turn on at specific time even if it's raining at that very moment, which let's be honest, it's quite dumb. I tried to get the information about current rainfall online, but it was hit or miss. I'd say it worked about 50% of the time, which is about as good as guessing. And that's where my own local, independent of the internet rain gauge comes in. It tells me exactly how much rain has fallen right where I live. This project is completely open source. If you want to make any modification for any reason, go ahead and do it. Grab my files and use them as you please. From the software standpoint, I use Home Assistant and ESP Home. But you can use any other open smart system. Or if you want, you can make a custom firmware and use it completely independently. The mechanical part of this project is the most interesting, so I'm gonna save it for later. Right now, let's focus on the schematic and PCB. The schematic is not impressive at all as you can see. There are only as many components as needed, without any unnecessary just-in-case add-ons that you'll probably never need. The main computing unit is the ESP32. It is capable of achieving really low power consumption in deep sleep mode, which is quite important in battery-powered devices like this. There is also a circuit for monitoring battery level. This way I can swap them ahead of time before they completely die. And the main star of the show, the HAL sensor. It is a magnetic sensor that is physically responsible for detecting whether it's raining or not. I'll tell you more about it once I have mechanical parts ready. Without props, it wouldn't be harder for me to explain, but this animation does a pretty good job showing how it works. Next I drew out the PCB layout. Since the schematic was straightforward, it didn't take long. I didn't even bother to record it, so... And now, I wanted to give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, JLC PCB. They are the ones who made that PCB and all the others on this channel. I've been using their boards for a long time, long before I started making videos on YouTube. So I blew my hard and cash on it. But hey, that's gotta be the ultimate stamp of approval, right? If you want to use their services, all you have to do is go to their website, drag and drop your Gerber files, and set a few parameters like number of the boards, solder mask color and surface finish. Then, in just a few days, you'll get your ready-to-go PCBs delivered straight to your home. Thanks, JLC PCB! The rain gauge, as the name implies, is gonna be functioning in a damp setting. So aside from enclosing the PCB in an almost airtight case, I coated it with a special varnish. Now, how to test it if it works? I know! I 
After an hour or so, you can see signs that it was working underwater. But come on, that was probably the most extreme test I could think of. And the flashing LED shows that the PCB survived. So if that's the case, inside of the rain gauge should be fine too. The exterior of the enclosure looks like a simple cylinder with a funnel on top. This funnel leads to one of two small, let's call them buckets. When enough water accumulates, the bucket tips over and pours the water out through these holes. As a result, the other bucket starts to collect water. And that's how it's gonna keep swinging over and over again. Now, all we have to do is time the gaps between each swing. And we've got all the necessary information to calculate the current amount of rainfall. Let's print and assemble it, so I can show you how it actually works. Before we continue, let's address elephant on my forehead here. I have a bruise. And it is not because I smacked into the desk when I was trying to pick something up off the floor. It's because I had a fight with grizzly bear and I won. Easily. Anyway, to make it easier to understand, I printed this pseudo housing that lets you take a look inside. The additional advantage for me was easier testing and making improvements. And there were quite a few of them. That's why instead of waiting for the rain, I took advantage of the shower. I spent countless hours in the shower fine-tuning my device that you viewers would believe. I watched how the tipping bucket behaves under strong streams of water and individual drops. I collected experience and designed each subsequent revision to be better than the last. And all the while, I've been taking notes to make sure that I don't miss anything. But all those notes will be lost in time, like tears in rain, because they got so Time to review how the final version works. If we know the diameter of the top part of the funnel, the amount of water that fits in one bucket and the time between each tipping, we can accurately calculate how hard it's currently raining. But how does ESP32 know when the overflow takes place? There's a magnet at the top part of the tipping bucket. Inside this tightly sealed container, we've got our PCB with a hull sensor. It detects the change in the magnetic field when the bucket swings. The microcontroller measures how much time passed since the last tick, converts the unit to liters per square meter, and sends that info to the home assistant. To make the result as precise as possible, both buckets must be identical. They need to react to exactly the same amount of water. And even though they are identical in Fusion 360, it may not be the case after printing. This is one of those things I wouldn't have predicted if it weren't for my extensive shower testing. 
to calibrate buckets, use these two screws. Pour a measured amount of water, for example 8 ml, and slowly turn the screw until the bucket tips. Do the same on the other side. This will ensure that both buckets respond to the same weight. You can also use these screws to adjust sensitivity of the rain gauge. The less water you need to trigger it, the faster the response you'll get. But keep in mind that the battery life will be shorter due to the more frequent tipping. At my store you can buy a plain PCB or a ready-made device. In that case you won't have to worry about calibration. I'll do it for you. As a middleman between the device and home assistant, I used ESP Home. It's the easiest and most robust way if you ask me. I'm generally a big fan of ESP Home, but the more I dive into it, the more limitation I see. So we can expect more bare metal approach in the future. On my website you can find configuration file and a detailed description. Link down below. I made a separate section for the power supply, because it's not obvious. I'm using batteries since the device can, and most likely will be, mounted far away from an outlet. A clear downsign of that is that you need to replace battery every now and then. And how long every now and then lasts depends on the amount of rain in your area. In northern Poland, where I live, it should hold up for about a year. And we have plenty of rainfall, especially in the fall. The device mostly operates in deep sleep mode, and it's only awakened by the tipping bucket. It sends the data to the home assistant and goes back to sleep ASAP. So, the more it rains, the more often you'll have to swap the batteries. Now, let's mount it in the final location. I'm gonna put my rain gauge on the fence. It's gotta be far enough from the house, so the tall walls and other obstacles don't mess up the readings. The most important thing is to make sure that nothing gets in the way of the rain falling into the funnel. Let's test if this thing even works. But to do that, we gotta wait until it finally starts raining. But unfortunately, patient isn't my strong suit. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it was useful for you. If so, you definitely gotta check out the one with the sprinkler controller in here or here or here I don't know